Thank you, Ranking Member Correa. Now recognize Ms. Sparts uh, from Indiana for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I definitely can tell that we have a significant difference of opinion uh, what the government was created for. From my perspective, government wasn't created, only socialist governments are created to provide for the prosperity and promises that it can never fulfill. It always runs out of money. Unfortunately, our government did too. Uh, but our government did, was created under constitution to protect rights to life, liberty, and property. And unfortunately, administrative state became very, very oppressive. And you are, unless you are very politically connected and or wealthy, you have no ability to survive in the current environment. And it's getting to the point that the little guy is getting destroyed. And you have no ability. Don't tell me that any normal person has an ability to have an influence on executive branch and president to replace these judges unless you can give a couple million dollars to campaign of a president. You are screwed. And this is the reality what we have. So I think we have to really start thinking about how we're going to resolve that. And that's my question for the witnesses. We know that we're in trouble. And, you know, and I think Chevron doctrine discussion, it's a very serious discussion. I'm glad it's happening, and hopefully the Supreme Court will start doing some things to restore some imbalances. But what other things we need to do? Maybe, Professor Mascott, you can tell how we've gotten here and what are we going to do, because this is not a good situation. Well, thank you for the question, Congresswoman. I think, um, it's particularly since we're here uh, today talking about agency adjudication, I think for starters to look at some of the recent statutory changes in the explosion of agency power to bring enforcement actions within its own tribunal. One thing that often gets lost in, in the discussion, and you're raising some important points in your remarks, is how recently we have expanded internal agency tribunals. It wasn't until um, 1990, for example, that um, the SEC was able to bring and impose a lot of civil monetary penalties and important proceedings in-house, and then it was a few years after that that those penalties and the, those internal proceedings were applied to parties outside of registered entities. Uh, the Dodd-Frank Act in particular really um, explosively expanded agency power to bring enforcement actions in its own tribunal, and it's unclear really why that's necessary. One of the stated reasons tends to be efficiency, but we know from litigation that a lot of the other witnesses have been involved in here that agency proceedings themselves often take years to wind through the process. So I think um, as an initial matter, this uh, committee and Congress could go back and re-examine whether agencies should be imposing sanctions, lifetime bans, and penalties at all in their own tribunals or whether they should go into the court system. And if you are going to preserve agency adjudicative authority, perhaps require transparency. Agencies maybe should have to um, publish the factors that they use when they decide how they're going to engage in these proceedings. Um, but they really should be much more restrained, subject to the accountability of constitutional rights. And, uh, and I don't think rights. accountability is going to happen within the agencies. I'm sorry to tell you. This is very, it sounds all good on paper, but it has to happen somehow in a different way. Mr. Alt, you have some ideas? Well, I, you know, ultimately, I think you, you, when you have these core issues, when you have, you know, the sorts of penalties that we see the SEC meeting out, where you permanently bar individuals from practicing uh, their profession, uh, where you, where you see draconian penalties, these are these are questions I think properly should be decided by Article Three courts. Uh, I, I think, quite frankly, there is no substitute for that, and I, and I think Congress could go ahead and make that requirement. So we can start suing our agencies, correct? That's the only way to sue agencies for unreasonable <laughs> decisions? So what are we going to do? Well, it, it at least... Let allow people to do that? Or what are we going to do? Well, I, you know, in terms of that, that at least... What is the recourse? What is it if you're a normal American? What is your recourse if you have unreasonable fines that happening? What is it, what is it going to do on unreasonable decisions? What are you going to do? You know, would you have Mr... Chernovets, you have some suggestion. What do you do as a normal person that, you know, goes through this process that there is no transparency and they can do whatever they want? You have no ability to influence. There is no trial. There is no jury. There is, it's really, there, the process is so insider-driven and you have no ability. Unless you're well-connected, you're in trouble. 
Even if you're well-connected and wealthy, you don't have a chance. Uh, folks in front of the SEC settle their cases 98% of the time. It's not because 98% of the people the SEC goes after are guilty. It's because they can't afford to fight all the way through the process for years and years and years and years on end. The agency beats them down into submission and finally puts a settlement offer on the table that they can't afford not to take because they're out of money and they're out of, you know, they want to get back to practicing their career uh, uh, and, and they're just not able to continue to fight for their innocence. So I know I, th I think as long as these administrative adjudication apparatus are in place, that there isn't a lot of hope for people who find themselves uh, you know, arrayed against the federal government in these enforcement actions. You need the independent federal judiciary as the intermediary between the individual citizen and the state. Thank you, my time has expired. I guess we need to be a lot better lobby for the people. We as the Congress, thank you.